you guys are thinking, hey, isn't that that guy who used to sell us mushrooms in high school? <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say, I never sold mushrooms in high school. I sold them in college. <laughs> and I'm only kidding, like I never sold mushrooms in college. It was cocaine. <laughs> so I started seeing an online therapist recently, and I know saying that out loud, like some of you might be thinking like, oh wow, this guy's really stable, you know? <laughs> How did I start online therapy? That's a great question. Uh, the company that I work for, uh, out of interest of mental health awareness, offered everyone in the company access to six free online therapy sessions. Like it's a free trial for Netflix. It's almost like they're like, you know, go ahead and give it a shot. If you don't like it, just cancel it. You'll find another way to fill up all those empty voids inside of you. <laughs> But I think therapists, they, you know, started going online uh, because their sessions were too much like their ex-girlfriend's Netflix account. <laughs> <laughs> their patients are all like, oh, wow, there's like a lot of like information about UFOs coming up and Nazi documentaries and all this like stuff about real life murder. Uh, and it's really scary. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this uh, documentary about, you know, Holocaust deniers, I might be recommending to you a new therapist. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, online therapy is actually pretty great uh, because anytime my therapist brings up uh, or wants me to start talking about, you know, more difficult things, I just pretend the internet connection is dying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, what's, uh, what's that you want me to talk about? That uh, repressed memory about who, who touched me where? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going through a tunnel. And she's like, I can see you. <laughs> and I'm like, can you really know? <laughs> I don't like social media. I don't know. I, you know, I guess it's because I don't like being social. <laughs> I don't like the media. I don't really like people. And to be honest, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> but, uh, you know, when you're pretending to be a comedian, you kind of have to get an Instagram page. Uh, and, one of the weird things I noticed about social media is the fact that we've like completely normalized stalking people and there's like absolutely no repercussions for it. And like Instagram, they don't even try to hide behind it because you just follow people on Instagram. Fifteen years ago, if I told you I was following someone, you know, I would have been a stalker. <laughs> now I'm a fan. <laughs> It's become so commonplace to stalk people online that you've got to kind of appreciate the guys who are still out in the field, you know, following people to finish it. <laughs> because these guys are the real heroes, you know? <laughs> They're hiding in bushes. They're slipping down alleys when you turn around. They're taking pepper spray to the face. That's just commitment to the craft. These guys are pros. They got ski masks. They got police scanners. They rented a van. <laughs> and not me, I'm just a hobbyist, you know? What do I have? I've got a cell phone and a list of broken dreams. <laughs> I should clarify, like, I don't stalk people on Instagram. <laughs> I stalk them on LinkedIn. <laughs> because I am a professional. <laughs> and I just want everyone to know that currently I'm open to work. <laughs> so I was reading an article the other day that said a mystery boy was found dead inside of a suitcase in New York City. And then my initial reaction to this was like, wow, mystery boy is like the shittiest superhero I've ever heard of. <laughs> like this guy couldn't even get up in a suitcase. How am I supposed to expect that he would be able to like fight for our city? <laughs> Certainly if he had like one superpower, like I don't know, the power to unzip shit. <laughs> he gotten out of that mess. <laughs> That's a funny joke, I think. <laughs> I think I'll tell you guys one more thing and then I'm just going to kind of get out of here if you don't mind. Um, I like to think I'm a pretty liberal guy, uh, but I've found that I'm most liberal with my use of the word retarded. <laughs> and I know, I know it's not the right thing to say. It's not a nice thing to say. In fact, I know it's an ableist thing to say, but when I use the word retarded, I don't mean it to put someone down who has a disability. I mean it more in a sense of like, oh, that's gay. <laughs> <laughs>
But if you think about it, like the R word is like the millennials version of the N word. We just can't stop saying it yet. <laughs> I use it just as much as I use other millennial buzzwords like chill or latte. <laughs> Sometimes I use them all in the same sentence. Like, I was out with a friend of mine the other day and he was like, hey man, have you tried this coffee shop? And I'm like, mm, yeah, I think so. I think that place is pretty chill. But if we go there, you gotta try their latte, because that shit is fucking retarded. <laughs> <laughs> and it's <scary. laughs> Thanks guys, that's my time. Up next to the stage is Mary.